Hello! I'm going to show you what you can do with Steve's Factory Manager as well as what the mod actually is. If you did, don't know that already, Steve's Factory Manager is the mod I made for Mod Jam, a mod making competition uh, which basically um, forces the competitors to make a mod from scratch within four days. And this is my, well, entry. So first of all, to use the mod you will have to make some items and you need this machine inventory manager and later on we will have the inventory cable as well uh, and this is the recipe for them uh, so let's uh, get started so if you use one of these you can put it next to inventories so that's exactly what I've done here, I've put it next to two chests here I have one chest here with gold and one chest here with iron ingots and if you right click here you will open its interface and I already have a thing here uh, ready but what we want to do is click here to create a trigger. We need a trigger to start it all off. Then we need an input and I already had one here already otherwise you will just create it like so. And what we want to do is open open it up and then we will get more options what we should do with this input. And here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select one of these chests like so. I'm going to select this chest here and you can get the coordinates of it um, and that's basically this chest, the one with iron in it. And don't uh, get fooled by input. What input means is that it's going to take what's in that chest and input it into this machine itself. So the uh, machine inventory manager will input that into itself. Then we need to select a target. And more to this later, I'm just going to activate the downside there. And then I have that activated. More to that later, like I said. And items here, more to that later as well. I'm going to select that as being a blacklist. Right. Now I need an output as well, and this is an output that is going to be sent things, things out from the machine inventory management uh, block and therefore it's going to sort of input it into other inventories. And now I'm going to select the other one, uh, which is that one, the one with the gold in it. You can see that at the coordinates. And the uh, target, I'm more to that later, I'm just going to activate there as well, and I don't have to do anything else there. So what I can do now is just to select these uh, like so. I click once, drag it, and then click again. Like so. Now I've collected it, um, well, made that chain, and now the iron is gone. Where did it go? Well, it was moved over here. Why? Well, let's take a look. The trigger starts all off. Then when I check the input, we grab um, it all from the chest, and then we tell it to go into the other chest. Like so. So, it just moved everything like so. But there's much more to it. So let's continue. Here we have uh, the same thing but with cables. So if you connect cables like this, that means that um, all the inventories that are adjacent to cables that are connected to the block itself will also be available. So now if I create an input here and I go to inventories, as you can see I have this guy two blocks away and this one one block away. So that one is the two block away because that's the shortest distance that is two blocks. So we can use cables to connect more things here. Right, so now let's move over here. As you can see, I'm using a furnace this time. What I want to do, I have some coal here. I want to put the coal in this uh, furnace here, but I don't want to put it anywhere. I want to put it in the e in the coal slot here. And in vanilla, uh, a furnace is not, uh, well, you don't put it uh, from the side. You put it, uh, or actually do put it from the side, sorry. You don't put it from the bottom, like uh, you might have expected if you're familiar to uh, modded sites. So we want to put it to the bottom side, not to any other side. So if I go here and I create a trigger, so uh, move that later, and then I go here. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to grab it from the chest, and this is where it comes, uh, where the directions come comes into play. Which direction w would I want to extract things from the chest? Well, it doesn't matter. So I just pick one, right? And the same thing here with items. More to that later. So now we have the input. Now I need the output as well. Uh, and if I do this, I select the furnace, and then I pick, pick the top one, and we'll see what's going to happen. And th then uh, nothing there, and then we just connect all of these. Like so. And now you might have seen that the coal went to the top. That's not what we want. So I'm going to m take it out and go back into the output part here, and deactivate this guy, and then I'm going to instead go here and activate this, this one. 
as you might expect you can select multiple sides if you wanted to be able to go into both the, the bottom side and the south side if so it will start trying to put it in the uh, bottom side and then the south side but we don't want that we only want the bottom side there so now if I put the code back there it's going to be get moved out and put in the slot that we want it to sweet right let's continue so now I have some iron gold and stone in here and I want them to be moved over there okay how do I do that well I start with a trigger then with an output, well, not an output, an input, and the inventory, which chest should we pick? It's easy, the one that is furthest away. There you go. Uh, and then the target here, any side is fine because, well, it doesn't matter which direction from the chest we're uh, interacting with it. And here comes the, the trick here. So now I can se select items. As you saw, we had ingots, gold and iron, and then we had stone as well. So if I only want to move the stone, then I can go in here and search for stone. And then I click stone there. So now the stone is going to get moved but by nothing else. So that is going to put in what I call the input buffer and then we can output it again. Uh, so then we want to uh, select the other one and then we just select the target. And here I'm not going to select anything. Okay, so if I do that, then we'll open up here and we'll see the stone. But all of those are still there. Nice. But that was an, a, um, uh, a whitelist. We can also work with a blacklist. So now I select a blacklist instead. And all of a sudden, all of these things were moved. But now, if I take these, oops, I screwed up the recipes. But if I move these back here, like so, only the stone will be left behind because that is uh, being used with a blacklist, like so. But what we also can do, we can also do it on the output end. So we can add the imp well we have a blacklist here for the input that we want to move everything that is not stone and now we can have on the on the output here that we only want to accept gold for instance and if I do it like that then uh, what what we will see is that uh, uh, we will only actually move the gold if I move these like that this time like so so the the input itself will accept uh, the iron as well but it won't actually move it and what we can see if I'm actually going to pick up another chest and put it there or well let's um, I'm going to put it here like so uh, it doesn't really matter if I want I can create another output like so and that's just going to be uh, that one that is furthest away and that's the reason why I put it uh, quite far away so I can easily see which one it is um, and I select the target and now, oops, I need to connect it as well. What's going to happen is the, oops, is the following. Now the iron is there and the gold is there. And to show that this is actually what's going to happen, I'm going to move all of these things back to the inventory. Both of them were moved out. The gold is there and the iron is there. Why? What is happening? Well, let's take a look. First of all, we head to the input. So that's going to move everything that is not stone into the uh, buffer about things we want to move. So we want to move iron and gold. Then we go to the first output. The output is going to tell us um, move everything that is gold. So then it's going to remove all the gold from this buffer and put in the chest here. Then in the end here we have a blacklist but an empty blacklist. That means we, we want to move everything. And therefore it's going to move everything that is left in the input buffer. But the gold has already been moved to another chest, this chest. And therefore the iron ends up here. As you might have realized, we can, if we want to, specify even uh, more items. So if I have a blacklist of stone, I can also say, well, I also have a blacklist of wood. Or a blacklist of uh, birch wood as well, like so. And then we can scroll, so we have 30 different items here you can choose from. But what if you al also want the, the planks to matter? Like, now we have oak wood planks and birch wood uh, oak, or well, not birch wood, uh, birch wood. Uh, uh, wood. Um, what if we don't really care about which uh, type it is? Well, then we can right click. And here, as you can see, we have the birch wood. Here's actually also how you delete a setting if you don't want uh, this anymore. Uh, here's how you go back. 
uh, and then we have damage value 2. Maybe I instead want to have it as damage value 3. As you see, it changes to jungle wood, so it's an easy way to change things here to metadata that you otherwise can't access. But if we just select is detection fuzzy instead, that means that it's not going to care about whether the uh, oak, well, whether the wood is oak or jungle or whatever. So now if I put, um, if I go and find some uh, uh, wood, and if I pick some spruce wood, some birch wood, some oak wood, and then some uh, wood like so, plank some wood I mean, and if I add all of these here, like so, uh, we should be able to see uh, what it's doing with them. So uh, here, so we have a blacklist of oak uh, wood planks and jungle wood like so, and then we should see, there we go, so we have the birch wood planks being moved over there, because they are not a part of the blacklist, because the oak wood planks are, but since we set the wood one to being fussy, that means that it's going to blacklist all types of wood, whereas the non-fussy one only blocks the uh, oak wood planks there. So if I all of a sudden go back to the input here, to the to the items like so, right click, remember right click to, to uh, modify and uh, left click to actually select the item. So if I go there and remove the fussy detection, and then what's going to happen is that we all of a sudden just have the jungle wood left here and we have all the other types like so. So you can select if it's going to be fussy or not by doing so. So there we have a blacklist and a whitelist for special items. Right, so let's head over here. So what can we do now? Well, let's see what we have. We have some gold ore and some iron ore in this chest. So what if I just want to move a, a specific amount of them? Not all, the whole stack. So first of all we need this chain. A trigger, an out input, and an output. So first of all, I'm going to select the inventory here, and that's the furthest away because that's where we had it. And then the target wherever it doesn't matter because these are chests. Remember, when we have a furnace, it does uh, matter because where do we want it to go from the top, from the bottom, and things like that. Okay. So what do I want to move? Well, let's move only. Uh, we can search for ore. That's very clever because then we get both. Uh, I only want to move, say, gold. Right. That's going to move all the gold. But what if I only want to move, um, um, let's say, five pieces of gold, like so. Right. Um, and that's going to do that. And then we create an output. And, uh, uh, oh, I had an output, so we can delete that. There you go. Just drop it there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is have an empty blacklist. So that's going to just going to accept everything. A setting there. And then we take that one. Okay. So now if I hook this together we will see that it will only move five pieces of gold. But it will do that every time. So every time it tries to d move things, it's going to move five gold. Okay, but that's exactly what we told it to do. If I head over to the um, input here instead, and head to blacklist. So what does this mean? Well, now we're blacklisting five gold. We're not blacklisting gold, we're blacklisting five gold because we set told it to specify an amount. What does that mean? Well, that means that if we take the gold, I think it actually uh, had time to move everything out before I managed to... Yeah, there you go. So now it moves everything out but five gold. Because I blacklisted not the gold itself, but just five pieces of it. And that's why, why it ends up like this. But this is not uh, the only things you can do. So now I actually set things to the input. So the input, I can say uh, whitelist, send this amount through. Or I can say blacklist keep these uh, behind because we blacklist just this amount. So now I'm going to make an empty blacklist which means let everything uh, through because we haven't stopped anything. And now I'm going to go to the output and here we can also specify the items like we saw but also with item counts. So if I uh, have a whitelist here that's going to tell us which items can, can come into the inventory. So let's go for gold ore. But that will let all the gold ore in and uh, nothing else. But if I specify an amount, this is going to tell it, well, yeah, let the gold ore in, but just five pieces. So that means that if we put the iron there and the gold there, it's going to move five pieces in here. And if I remove some of that, it's going to keep that stocked at five pieces, no matter what. Because I've said, you are only allowed to move five pieces in there. However, if I add it myself, it's obviously not going to remove it because I'm not telling it to. I just said, well, move in some gold ore, if you don't already have five pieces. And then we had the last setting here, uh, if we had a red like this. We can also blacklist, so we can tell that a specific amount of, of gold ore shouldn't be moved. And this 
uh, might seem a bit weird, but what's ha going to happen is that, well, we're going to leave five behind in a similar way of actually uh, blacklisting them here, but it actually has a big difference. Now it's not actually blacklisting, it's not blacklisting the items we move out, but the items we move in. So I'm going to show you, if I actually go to the input here, now it's getting a bit advanced if you combine these things. So if I'm going to whitelist and just say, all right, I'm going to move uh, some gold ore out. So only move gold ore out. And I'm going to move 10 out, like so. So what is that going to mean? Well, basically, I'm going to move uh, 10 out every time, right? But it also means that I'm going to blacklist 5 gold ore. And those that means that I'm always going to leave 5 gold ore in the buffer in this item buffer that where, where things are being moved. So if I add it like so, we're going to see that 5 are being moved uh, each time. And that's because we try to move 10, but then the output say, well, leave 5 behind. So why is this good? Well, we could do something like this. So I'm just placing it far away so it's easy to find. And then I'm going to add another output. So remember, we move 10 golds into this buffer, but we only move 5 out. What does that mean? Well, we have 5 golden ores left in the buffer. So now if I head over to inventory, I pick that chest that is far away, let's pick a target here, and by default we have an empty blacklist, which means that any item can go in here, so we're going to move everything that's left there in the buffer, and all of a sudden we, if I actually move those there, so we will move 5 gold each time there, but we will also move 5 gold each time there, because we move 10 gold out of the input, and then we uh, stop 5 golds from actually entering this chest, and therefore we have five gold left that goes into the other chest. So there's a combination of the different things. So just using whitelists and blacklists with a specific amount is fairly simple, but then you can combine them to achieve uh, more advanced things. So simple components can turn into very advanced ones if you so wish. Right, so let's go here. So as it says on this sign, it says condition. And we have another thing here, we can create a condition, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Here we have some coal, and to help me I'm actually going to need some some ores. So I'm just going to grab that iron ore. Okay, so if I started with uh, creating a trigger here, I can then add a condition. As you can see, it has one uh, peg on the top and two at the bottom, saying true or false. Right. And what I want to do is select the inventory. I'm going to select the furnace. Right. And then I'm going to select a target. I'm going to select the, um, let's see, the side. And the side is if we have, uh, no, actually not. I'm going to select the uh, top. There you go. So let's activate that. Uh, so that's where you put things in that is going to be, uh, be used in the furnace. Okay, and what I'm going to look for is ore, like so. And um, let's um, let's do it like this. Let's uh, specify. Um, no, let, let's just keep it. We're, we're looking. We're looking for some ore. Okay. So n not no specific amount. It's not fussy. We just look for some iron ore. And that's pretty much it. So now, when it's going to be called here, it's going to check, do we have that iron in the top of the furnace? Right, if that's the case, so we we have the true one here, so we can connect these uh, to, to each other. So if that's the case, then what do we want to do? Well, select the chest, uh, I'm just going to target like so, and then we m want to move out um, one piece of, uh, of coal. So then I'm just going to say, well, move out some coal, uh, yeah, we can specify one piece like so, and then we can create an output like like this. Uh, so into the furnace, and then into the side, and uh, no, nothing there. So now, if I do this thing here, if I add some iron there, it's going to start add some coal. As you can see, it's co see it, it is going to continuously add coal, and by setting it up it a bit more clever, we can actually make sure that it adds the right amount depending on what we have. But let's take a look of something else before we move on. I'm going to add uh, use the gold over there. If I go to the condition here and hit to the items here, if I add gold over here as well, like so, now it's not going to add any coal. And why is that? Well, if you paid attention, it says requires all. That means that it's now looking for both iron and gold. And that's not going to happen. We won't have both gold and iron in the same uh, slot in the furnace. But in other cases, you may, might be looking for both gold and iron inside a chest or whatever. Then it makes sense to have requires all. But what we want is we want to either have iron or gold 
and if so we can click in if any and therefore now it's going to increase again and even if I have gold there it's going to increase but if I don't have any of those it's not going to increase another thing worth noting is that if you specify a amount we need that amount of items before anything is going to happen otherwise one is enough so if I specified eight iron here then if I add just one iron it's not going to add anything but if I have more than I more than eight iron it's going to start adding coal like so so you can use that to specify more advanced conditions here we have slot ranges so in this chest I have a lot of wool and in this chest I have nothing so let's move those over so I'm going to create a trigger and then create an input and of course an output as well and um, in this input I'm going to uh, specify we move it from the chest there and now I'm going to activate the downside because the well the bottom side it doesn't really matter it's a chest but I'm going to use ID ranges I'm going to say well slot one uh, through uh, two will be fine so that's three different slots so zero one or two will be fine and uh, we have no no specific whitelist so we have an empty blacklist like so and these things are being moved to the other chest like that and just any target and that's fine so now if I connect these two things you will see that in this chest we will have the three first there and the three first will be empty if I take this black hole and put it there it's also going to be moved so now I'm just controlling the th first three so you can specify a range like that for a specific side and what if we want to have multiple ranges well you can't have multiple ranges for one specific side but we can use the different sides to actually achieve something like this for, for something like a chest because all the sides of the chests activates the same uh, inventory and the same slots. So now I can go to the upside here as well and here I might want to specify um, I don't know uh, range 5 to 5 so that's basically slot 5 and then I activate it like so. So now what's going to happen is that from the bottom it's going to extract 0, 1 and 2 and then here it's going to extract 5 from the top and therefore both of them are going to be moved like so and if I add something else in there like the gold it's going to be mo moved as well but all of these things are being kept so in that sense you can uh, specify the range like so and that's all for that let's move on to this thing here so I've set up with a lever and a button here and this is actually something quite interesting do we have any items yes we have some items to move here so now I'm going to create a trigger and now it's actually the trigger we're going to work with so if I open it up here we can click on this result thing here and as it says now it says on interval and if we hover there it's going to say interval so the trigger is going to trigger it at a specific interval but what if we hit redstone control instead and now all of a sudden we will have many of these uh, outputs on, on this trigger so we have on high pulse that means that it's going to happen when we receive a pulse and we have low pulse that means it's going to happen when we lose the pulse or well, lose the signal and then we have while high signal and while low signal, which is basically during a, well on an interval while we have a redstone signal. And this redstone signal has to come to the block itself. Uh, so that's why I have these connected like this. You can't connect it to the to the cables. The cables won't detect the redstone signal. So what I want to do now is just create an input. And we ha had some stone in there, so let's move some uh, some stone. So I'm going to activate like so, and whitelist stone, and I'm going to specify an amount. So right click, specify amount, and one will do, just for a demonstration. And then I create an output to the other chest, and this is just going to, um, this is just going to, well, just move everything it finds. So if I do this now, and then I connect it to on high pulse, like so, then what's going to happen is nothing. But if I hit this button here, when, I re when we receive the signal, it's going to move one stone. If I click again, we're going to move another stone. Sweet. And now if I go here and click on, on low pulse instead, like that. Now we will actually have time to see it. There we go. It just moves it when the button goes out. So if you pay attention, when the button moves out, it's going to move a stone. You can see the button uh, at the uh, bottom of the screen. There you go. So that's that one. But we can also connect it to the while high signal like so. So now it's not going to move anything. But if I uh, pull that lever, it's going to move like so. And then when I pull it up again, it's going to stop move things. So now I can control things with redstone. And of course, let's take a look at the last one as well. So now it's going to move things like so, but I can stop it by giving it the redstone signal. And you can all 
all use uh, you can all use these uh, four at the same time for different things if you want to. Another thing uh, you might want to take a look at uh, is this interval thing. And just to note, it does exist in the normal one as well. So we have the interval there as well. And what this is, the time between this command is triggered. So if we say three seconds instead, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, when I pull that up, it's going to wait and move that in, wait three seconds, move that in, wait three se seconds, and move that in, and so on. So the default time is just one second, and you can't go lower than that. You can type zero seconds, but it's still going to uh, behave like one second. And that's pretty much it. So now you can control it by redstone, and you can also say how often it's going to do that. You can go up to 999 seconds, so that's a fairly long time. So that's that. And that's pretty much all of the all there is. And by combining all of these things, you can get some uh, neat examples here. So what I have here is a furnace and a chest. What I'm going to do is grab some ore and some coal to show you what it does. It's a fairly uh, advanced thing here. So as you can see, first of all, I have two different trees of logic, and that's totally fine. I have two triggers and a lot of other things. I have two conditions as well, and pretty much, uh, well, uh, a neat setup here. So first of all, I trigger it when I have a high signal, so it's not going to do anything right now, but it has a lever there that is going to be used. We have a condition here, and what it's going to check is the furnace. It's going to check the top of the furnace, and it's going to check if we have any iron ore. It's actually going to check if we have 57 iron ore. What does that mean? Well, if we have 57 iron ore, that means we can't move 8 more iron ore into the system because, well, the stack size is 64. So we're going to look for, is it full? Because what we want to move is 8 iron ores uh, each time. So if that's false, so now we're not using the true peg, we're using the false peg. So if there actually is less than 57, that means that we can move 8 in. And that's actually what we're going to try to do in the end, if we take a look at this. Uh, we want to move 8 iron and as you might have seen, we also want to move uh, coal, so we're going to move, actually, uh, it has to be specified one, like that, and that's what we're going to do. If we have room, then move in eight iron and one coal. Why do we want to do that? Well, that makes us not waste any coal, because if we have eight iron, then we will use one piece of coal for it. And then we will have specify where they go here. Um, we specify that this uh, thing, the coal, goes into the, the bottom side, uh, that's actually wrong. That should go into the uh, uh, side, like so. Uh, and then we have that the uh, top top side here receives the iron. But we I actually skipped one condition, and that's this thing here. And if we take a look at that, what that one is actually checking is that we have eight iron and some coal. And why do we check that? Well, that means that if we have eight iron and one piece of coal. That's going to not waste any coal, and therefore we move it all in. So first of all, we check that we have the space, then we check that we have the components, and then we move it all in. And we're only going to do that while we have a redstone signal. But then we also have this setup here, which moves all the ingots back. So it's just going to access the furnace, and that's the bottom side, so that's correct. And it's going to have no blacklist, so it moves it all, and the output is just going to put it in the chest at the bottom, and no blacklist, so nothing, well, everything goes in there. So now, what happens if, if I add some coal, and I add some, I'm going to add eight pieces of iron. Now, that is going to be moved when I hit this lever. So there we go, the coal was burnt, and eight iron ingots, like, not ingots, but ores. And now if we wait for, for a while, uh, when this is done, it's going to get moved back using the other command line, like so. And now if I add, say, seven of these, like so, it's not going to move them, because then we will waste one piece of coal. But if I add a, an eighth one, it's going to do so. And another thing we can test is what happens if we add too much. Then that's going to make it overflow and just add coal, uh, because it can't add the iron, and then we won't have this perfect match anyways. But that's of course not going to be the case, because if we have 61, that means that we have 57, and therefore we can't move it all in. As we can see, however, the coal wasn't moved in properly, and the reason why that is the case is, of course, because uh, this is set up wrong. So if I go to the output and uh, the coal here, it's going to specify that we want to move one coal. We have a whitelist of one coal. That means we will always have one coal there. We shouldn't have that. We should have that all coal is uh, acceptable, and then that uh, the items here should be specified to one. 
So that was a bit of an error and that gave us a very uh, different result there. So now if I remove those, it's going to do it properly there. So as you can see, depending on how you specify things, you can do it to uh, make it do a lot of things. So if I set it to the input, it's going to move one coal each time. But if I set a whitelist on the output, it's just going to keep one coal. So depending on what you need, you can, well, do it like you want. And that's pretty much it. And I just have a few examples here in the end. So this is a way of setting it up. So what are all these furnaces doing here? Well, they are all connected. So if we wanted to, we could add an input here. And then we would have... Um, actually, they aren't connected. That's odd. Um, let's see. There you go. Uh, yeah. It didn't update properly. No? Okay. So that might be a bug. Uh, I will take a look at it. Uh, no, actually, that's why. There's no cable there. So now, we, now it works. So if we set it up like this, we have all the furnaces. And as you can see, if we have too many for it to show up, we can just scroll it back and forth like this. So yeah, uh, <laughs> there was a cable missing there. And obviously, it won't connect like this. You, you have to have them all the way like so. And if we do that, it's going to connect them all like that. And that actually takes us to another thing there. As you see, when I removed it, I lost connection to all the furnaces. Here I've set up a little neat system, and I have two pistons here. In the end, I have some diamonds, so that's my loot. What happens if I do it like this? I can actually move the cables. And now all of a sudden, when I hit, go to the input here, I won't have that chest here. But if I put these levers correctly, I will have a full cable, and that's actually going to allow me to... Uh, get that chest as well, if I select that chest there, it's all of a sudden going to move the diamonds here, and the diamonds have been removed. So you can use it sort of like a lock as well, and that's pretty much what you can do there with the pistons as well. And here is the final example, uh, which is, well, I've used chests and furnaces only in my examples, but you can use any inventories you like. And in vanilla we don't have too many, we had furnaces, the chests, the dispenser, the brewing stands, and the droppers, I might have forgot it forgotten about something but as you can see it's going to list them all but if you use other mods as well you probably lose track on how many inventories there actually are and all of those will work as well so if an inventory uh, well if a block has an inventory if it's a kind of chest if it's a kind of machine that has an inventory then you can work with it then you can specify its size you can specify its slots and its items and so on and it will work with any modded things there as well and that's pretty much it another question I've been receiving is will you continue on this mod? Yes, you will see uh, future updates as well um, when I update the mod after Mod Jam. But this is what we have for Mod Jam, and I think it's a pretty useful mod, even though I just had a short time of developing it. So thank you all for watching, and I hope to hope you find this mod useful. You can find the download lo load link in the description, and uh, have fun.